Hello out there, I'm Papa Tone. Are you new to 3D printing? Maybe you haven't started yet? Well, I'm new to it too. We got the Flash Forge Adventurer 4 3D printer back there about two weeks ago. So let's do a little show and tell about some of the things I've learned, some of the things I've acquired, and some of the things I've made over the last two weeks. And today is January 1st, 2022, so Happy New Year to anybody who's watching. Let's go. The first thing I printed, I wanted to do something relatively large. So I printed this MakerBot. He is in process, as you can see. He's got some little things that need to be filled in. There's a big letter M on the front of him. And there's a little line that goes across here and I just thought I'd fill those in for the sake of customization and also just to see how filling things in went. Uh, he's been primed and sanded a few times. His head didn't work when he printed in place, but that's all right. And he's coming out okay. Definitely needs some more sanding work. Perfection wasn't really the goal with this particular model. This was the first thing I did. So I chose the biggest one and that was fun. I do recommend it as a first project. The Adventurer 4 did real well with him. So more work to come on this guy. He'll sit there and watch the presentation, I guess. This is uh, emblematic of some of the Christmas gifts we gave this year. So this is a Christmas ornament that we printed off Thingiverse. I left some of the imperfections in there for the sake of time and also just so that uh, the person who's getting it knows that we made it. It's not a store manufactured thing. And so we just put those in like that. And you get a nice little snowflake ornament uh, that we will attach a hook or some thread to, paint up and give to its intended gifty. Sorry about the noise in the background. I shut the garage door to try to uh, minimize it as much as I can. So this is the first project I've really tried to go for any sort of fine detail on with the Adventurer 4. It's definitely been a learning process, but with a few simple adjustments suggested by uh, some kind folks on Reddit, we got a lot further this first time around than I thought we would. So this model is also from Thingiverse. It's the Staff of Ra from uh, India, the Indiana Jones films. So this first print I did, I did laying down flat. It's really not bad. Um, I could probably work with this. It would take an awful lot of sanding, maybe some engraving to get some details back. You can see here that uh, in the finer layers, especially on the feathers, there's some hijinks going on in terms of it being sort of granular and strange. Uh, I would imagine I'd be able to fill that in but it would take a long time, so I chose to reprint. Also, you can see here on this little feather chest piece, there's a lot of uh, banding and layering. I then switched to a 45 degree print with, uh, oh, I kind of pulled out all the stops here. I did a shell on it, I did a raft. It's not bad, but you can see, while the quality of the print is better, we still have some weird schnibbles going on here. Um, if we get real close, you can see that there's still a lot of horizontal lines and such, a lot of texture in there that you could work with, uh, again, but I decided maybe to ask again and a fine individual mentioned that printing straight up and down was probably the best course of action that led to this back piece, which I think is very fine in terms of its detail. Uh, you look at the chest here, it's much smoother. And this is the front piece that we've ended on. Really, really fine. I added a few uh, supports to the sides here. I don't think that was really necessary. Uh, but now that I am comfortable printing at a finer resolution, takes a little longer. This took about three and a half hours, um, but certainly a better option than this because this took 19 because of all of those supports so uh, definitely prefer this in terms of print time if we take a real close look at the details here you can see we even got some of the little lines inside the feathers so overall for somebody who genuinely has no idea what i'm doing the adventurer 4 has proven a very wise choice for a first timer like me and uh, I've been including my sons in the builds of course as well. I did model my first piece using a free program called Tinkercad. This is a chest plate 
for our little robot guy here. Uh, whoops, <laughs> I keep forgetting his head isn't attached. <laughs> That's a little horrific. I'll put it back in there, there we go. So this is part of the fun of 3D printing. I measured this front body part here and just uh, created a rectangle and the star and some octagons within Tinkercad, which is a free web-based program that I found very easy to use. Um, as with everything in this whole process, I have not read a manual anywhere at all yet. I just kind of turned things on and sort of watched a few tutorials. Part of the fun of the 3D printing process is of course prototyping and in this case I learned that uh, I didn't include the leg notches in my design here so he can't actually function he can't sit properly unless this plate is modified so I may hit this with a dremel and see if I can maybe notch out those pieces uh, or I may just redesign this and uh, print it out so I do recommend Tinkercad as a first program for trying to make your own stuff. I did buy also these sanding sticks. They have their different grits printed on them. So those are for getting in little nooks and crannies and things, and those are handy on uh, the MakerBot build. And there are definitely more things. I've been trying to work with less toxic fillers, like this wood filler right here. Uh, it works pretty good. I can see why people might want to go with something uh, more juicy, sort of like Bondo or something, but I, I don't really want to be around those kind of fumes just yet. This is the filler primer that I've been using for filling in spaces on my prints. Uh, so all of this is stuff that you'll hear a million times over in other videos. There were definitely a lot of things that I didn't consider when I decided to get into this hobby. For instance, having a good solid cabinet for the printer to live on with storage. As you can see, we're in the garage right now, so there are some challenges with printing in colder or warmer temperatures that we're gonna have to deal with. I don't really wanna have it inside because of the fumes. But overall, the Adventure 4 has been a good turnkey solution for somebody who really doesn't have any background with this stuff. There are certainly frustrations as with any hobby. For instance, uh, sometimes this residue can be difficult to get off the 3D print bed. The Adventure 4 has a nice rough print bed, so print adhesion hasn't been a problem like a lot of the videos that I saw early on with people applying glue sticks and things like that. So this is, uh, this is good. But getting this stuff off can be a challenge. Usually I have to heat the bed up a lot. And some of it I just flat out haven't been able to get off. Um, I've heated it up. I've applied uh, isopropyl alcohol when it's hot. A couple of different things. And uh, I'm just not having any luck. So if anybody knows about that, feel free to drop me a line. Let me know uh, how you get this schnibbly stuff off your 3D print beds. If you're considering getting into this hobby... I do recommend things like fine detail tools that'll help you remove supports and flashing. These are long nose, needle nose pliers, diamond needle files. Uh, I think these were $5 at Harbor Freight. And there's a whole bunch of different shapes. They come in really handy for cleaning out parts, especially little parts like this, that when you gotta get in here, inside it's much handier to have a tiny little file than a big one or try to do it with an exacto blade or something these i always have but i definitely recommend some gloves i've saved my hands a lot of damage by uh, not stabbing myself with diamond files or scratching them with sandpaper well that's another thing yes what they say is true sanding is real so i started with a big stack of uh 220 grit sandpaper like this that's usually my go-to to start and we could talk for quite a long time about the various parts and pieces i've acquired through the first two weeks of this process so what's the final analysis it's been a lot of fun was this the cheapest option no have i been satisfied with the experience absolutely i wanted a printer that was enclosed i wanted a printer i didn't have to build or adjust too much I wanted a printer that was easy to calibrate and didn't require any specialized knowledge to do. That's all here in this option. 
And that's why I was willing to pay the price that I did, just to eliminate some of the headaches that I've seen in other videos on YouTube of people just getting acquainted with this process. I think this is a great jumping on point for people like me who are brand new to this process, but want a minimum of technical stuff as we're getting started. The printer's fast. It does good quality. Well, fast, relatively speaking. In the time that I've edited this video, I printed this stock and this barrel for Han Solo's DL, for, for Han, for Han Solo's DL44 blaster as a project for one of my kids to put together. He asked me to do it, and so why not? I think the only hard thing about having one of these is going to be deciding who gets to use it when. But um, overall, I think it's a, a great experience so far. No major jams comes with the tools needed to fix those things. The only real problem that I had was when I started a print without putting the print bed back into the printer. So I got a huge spaghetti nest uh, because there was nothing for the filament to grab onto at the bottom of the printer. If you have any questions, uh, I'll answer them as I can, such as somebody like me can. I don't really know a whole lot yet. In the very unlikely case that you're still watching at this point, thanks for tuning in. And uh, hey, go make something. We've been having a lot of fun with this, and uh, maybe you can too. All right, stay safe out there, everybody. Happy New Year 2022. This is Papa Tone. Take care.